Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Not Too Complicated 2. How are you guys doing today? How's life? I am really hoping that the answer was positive. I wanted to start today's episode by having a teeny tiny bit of a chit chat with you guys because there are three comments that I get frequently in every single mod pack, so I thought I'd try to reply to them. And do you know what this is? This is called an ME controller. We're going to have a very small demonstration and therefore we are going to have a very garbage ME system so that I can show you something. In this applied energy stick system, which is incredibly garbage, we don't really have any type of storage except one compacting drawer. And you know, if we check, this is absolutely empty. However, let us put 9 redstone inside the compacting drawer. Do you see the problem? I only put 9 redstone dust in. We have 9 redstone and a block. The problem is that if I have a pattern for a redstone block, the applied energy stick system is going to think that, hey, I have a redstone block, but I also have 9 dust, so I should be able to craft one more block of redstone. But it really cannot, because it only has 9 redstone dust. And that is the entire reason I don't really like compacting drawer with applied energy sticks, because it will mislead your system. Using the same logic, I'm also not a fan of the transmutation interface, because in addition to causing a teeny tiny bit of lag, uh, it's also going to mislead your applied energy stick system. How you might ask? Well, that is a very good question. At this very moment, we have 5 quadrillion EMC, and let us say that is equivalent to 1 trillion redstone or 1 trillion glowstone, or half a trillion of both. But your system is going to think that it can craft 1 trillion of each. And that's not really good when you're relying on something to do the calculation for you, and you're giving it the wrong information. So I hope that answers two of your questions. One of them is the drawer, and one of them is the transmutation interface. Therefore, the system that I have with the energy condensers where I'm giving it EMC and I'm pumping in the items works except for two items. Uh, one of them is fading matter and the other one is colossal star omega, which also has a singularity because these guys are incredibly heavy on EMC and well, you can't really put fading matter to get these things out. It's going to take much longer. And for those two items, I believe I'm just going to use an EMC link. It should be fine. Another EMC related question which I think you might have is considering the power flowers and why do I need so many of them? I'm a little bit ahead in recording so I'm not really sure if too many of you asked for it or not but I'll give you an answer anyways. If you look at the recipe of the final star you might notice that we are going to need 8 final power flowers in order to just make one. And I'm not sure how we are going to finish this mod pack but we are going to need 4 final stars right? So that is 32 flowers in total, therefore I'm just crafting them ahead. It saves a teeny tiny bit of time in the end game. We should sleep. And also kill the stupid guy. Ah, that was just 10. Okay. And the final question that many of you have is regarding this item. Time in a bottle. I saw two episodes of Dire Wolf. One of them was when he was making singularities, then I got interested in the series, I started the first episode and I noticed that you're going to spawn with this item in your inventory. Many of you were worried that if I disabled it, I cannot finish the pack because there is a singularity for it which is used in the ultimate singularity. So don't you worry, I re-enabled it. I just disabled it for like one episode so that it doesn't spawn in my inventory. But the main concern that most of you guys have is not why I disabled the time in a bottle so that I don't get it in my inventory. The main concern is that why I hate the time in a bottle. I will try to explain it to you with an example. Imagine that you go to a very posh restaurant and then you decide to order a very fancy dish. The chef comes to your table and will explain to you why is this dish so fancy and how amazing the ingredients are. Then he puts a microwave on your table and starts heating up the canned food. How would you feel? Garbage, right? When you want to get entertainment or you want to do something fancy, the money that you pay goes towards the service. And if there is no efforts in the service which is being provided to you, then basically you're wasting your money, right? For me, time in a bottle is exactly the same thing. You are paying me with your time. I should not waste your time. So generally speaking, as a viewer, whenever I see a very low effort video and somebody uses a time in a bottle, I kind of get offended. And since I personally get offended, I don't really want to do the same thing with my own viewers. So in short, no, I will never use a time in a bottle. Also, just to clarify, I'm not saying that everybody who uses a time in a bottle offends me. For example, Ito uses time in a bottle in some of his videos. And also my dearest friend, Lord Fonda. But those are obviously not low effort videos. Anyhow, I'm very sorry that I wasted a lot of time on explaining this stuff, but these are the comments that I get on every single video and I thought maybe I should explain it inside the video. Cause I do that through the comments and I still get the comments. Anyhow, now let us get down to business. If you guys remember, last episode we installed an SPS chamber in order to get antimatter. The problem is I do AFK a lot, the solar neutron activator does not work during the night. Also the solar panels don't work during the night. 
So as a result, we get dangerous levels of nuclear waste inside the pipes. I did increase the number of pipes, but we still get a tremendous amount, so we need to do some tweaks. Well, actually, I have been tweaking a bit. We have 36 more solar panels on each side. We are also going to increase the number of solar neutron activators that we have, just in case. And although it is totally unnecessary, we are going to install the isotopic centrifuge so that the excess waste can be converted into neutronium. Which means you, my dear friend, you go back where you were. We are going to use one of the solar neutron activators. Oh, you have to go from the bottom. Yes, as I was saying, we are going to use one of the solar neutron activators in order to get neutronium. And the other two we are going to use in order to make polonium. I mean, in this way, we are going to also have more tubes and therefore more capacity for waste. Also, the tube for polonium, which thankfully is empty, is incredibly short. So we're just going to make it a teeny tiny bit longer. Like so. Oh, actually, you have to take it from the front, so yeah. The pipe for neutronium was also garbage, so I extended it a bit. And you're going to need another entangled block. Like so. So if I have not messed up anything, we should be good. Another safety check. So we have waste goes inside the centrifuge. Centrifuge is connected to another tube, which goes inside the solar neutron activator, which comes down here and we get neutronium. Don't you have... Oh, you don't have upgrades. It's weird. I thought I gave you upgrades. Uh, the second line of tube goes inside two more solar neutron activators and they are entangled to over here and go to the SPS chamber. I think we're good. Let's try this. It's just incredibly laggy. I don't like it. Yeah, everybody seems to be working. Good. I should be able to AFK. Needless to say, we're not going to run into any issues at this very moment because, you know, it's daytime. Everything works at maximum speed. We're going to run into problems if it rains or if it's nighttime. You're not covered, right? Yes. That would have been stupid. Also, just in case I made a boo-boo, uh, let's make a backup. Because it backs up every two hours. If I made a boo-boo, uh, we lose two hours. And I have been building, so yeah. So another problem that I have noticed is with the Mark III collector and antimatter relay. We started this, I think, last episode, and it has been a few hours, and you might notice a problem. Uh, we're not crafting the Ender Stars fast enough, and this is the reason. Eye of the Ender. This is the speed that we're crafting it, and we need to craft tens of thousands for both of them. You see? So here's what we're going to do. We are going to try and change the pattern. It's going to be processing. And I think the wisest decision is to use one of the crafters, a bottom center. We just do three recipes, you be on fast. And now I'm assuming crafting should be a teeny tiny bit faster. Oh, I reduced the number. So yeah, we're going to order 10,000 and see how it goes. That's good. Really good. And finally, it is nighttime and I can show you my problem. Yeah, you see, waste is full. And very soon we are going to start getting a backlog. But it seems that it's something that we can handle. Uh, that's really good. I think during the night we're just making plutonium and during the day we also make polonium. So everything should work fine. Let us move along. In order to finish this mod pack, we are going to need a ton of endless pearls. And endless pearls, well, we have all the ingredients that you see over here, except the nether star opinium core. Therefore, we are going to need quite a bit of opinium cores, the nether star version. And you might also notice I have 166,000 of the iron version. But just for argument's sake, let us say we want 100 nether star opinium cores. Let's order it. You need 1.4 million iron opinium cores. And the person who is going to craft it is this guy. And this guy is not the fastest thing in the world. So like Project Ozone, I think we are going to need a capacitor factory or something. I forgot what the hell this guy was called. Yes, Combination Crafter. I don't know, let's make 16 of that. And that means we need 128 pedestals? So if we use 10 crafting cores for the Iron Opinium core, I think that should be a decent number. And obviously, since they are going to be covered, we kind of need to entangle them as well. Y level 71, 72... Goes up to 80. I did not mess it up. Now we should be able to cover it. Perfect. The pedestals are not going to require any power, but the crafting core does. So we have a universal cable and a flux point. Yes, they have power. We should be able to provide resources to the pedestals using a pipe, like so, which obviously we need to separate them. Just as a very small clarification, I have not tested this, so I have no idea if it's going to work, but we will see. Okay, I had to prepare a few ender chests. Let's take them. In order to make the iron opinium core, we need three ingredients, iron, coal, and matter balls. So we are going to have three export buses, obviously. Uh, one of them is going to be for coal, goes inside this ender chest, which is black. The other one is going to be iron, which goes in the gray, if I'm not wrong. And the final one is matter balls, which goes into the light gray. Yeah, this should be fine. 
Um, so I know for a fact that we can pump in the items into the pedestals and well something like this should work if we use the ender chests. Yeah, they have the iron. We should be able to pump the coal as well. Yeah, everybody has coal, everybody has iron. The matter balls, we should be able to pump it into the crafters themselves. Yes, we have it. Oh, it's already even crafted. <laughs> okay. So now the question is, are you even going to be smart? Meaning that do I need a filter for the opinium core or are you just going to extract the opinium core without any filters? We shall see. It's very hard to see. <laughs> yeah, but it's working. Who cares? So every second we're crafting 10, is that good or is that bad? I don't know. Well, we had 16 sets, so I installed 16 sets. And well, 16 is better than 10. As a result, we are getting 16 iron opinion cores per second, which is great, until you order 100 of the nether star version. Yes, we are still missing a ton of items, but you might notice that iron is not the only problem. We also need 400,000 gold and 100,000 diamond opinion cores. Just as a rough calculation, these guys are going to craft one opinion core per second, so if we need 400,000 of something, that's 400,000 seconds. Also, you might notice that if I want to make the higher tier one, I need four of the previous version. So if we have 16 iron ones, uh, we can only make four for the gold. And you know, just one for the diamond, which is negligible. It's gonna take 15 hours. <laughs> the reason that I'm worried is that we need four nether star opinion cores per endless pearl, and we need four endless pearls in order to make one infinity catalyst, and we need one infinity catalyst in order to make an infinity ingot. Not to mention the crazy amount that we need in order to make the infused armor, as well as the infinity armor. So let's go with 16 more, I guess. Okay, I had to turn off the particles, but we have two towers, and that is a total of 32 machines crafting us iron opinion cores. And this is the rate that we're getting it, it's slightly crazy. However, we ran into another problem, well, matter ball is keeping up. Coal is keeping up, iron is not. Whatever you do, one of them is just not keeping up. So maybe instead, here's what we're going to do, we are going to use energy condensers. A, you my dear friend, you copy iron, and you my dear friend, you copy coal. We are also going to extract from three sides, it's gonna be much faster. And I'm hoping that with these changes, it's gonna keep up. So everybody should be crafting what they should? I think so. Here's the problem, I get matter balls. I should not get matter balls. I even have a filter just for opinion core, why are you giving me matter balls? I mismatched one of the pipes, but it can't be that. Yeah, this is iron the entire way. This is coal. This is also coal. I wish there was a method of locking a recipe, because you know, it's pumping out matter balls. Well, I think I did manage to solve the problem. Instead of whitelisting the opinion core, I'm just blacklisting matter balls. So now we're fine. I mean, I have been testing this for a while and no matter balls. Still, I don't really get the difference, but okay, it is what it is. Anyways, we have 32 crafters which are making us the iron opinium core, therefore we should be able to have 8 in order to make us the gold. Instead of importing the iron opinium core into our applied energistic system and then putting it inside those 8, we're just using a chest. It really doesn't have to be an ender chest, but it's okay. Actually, it has to be an ender chest. Yeah, because the other stupid thing is a matter ball, so yeah, this is wrong. It's a very good thing I did not connect it. Uh, since we don't have that many crafters which are going to make us gold, I think the export boss is going to work. Yes. Uh, that was 32, that was just a crazy number. And the setup is going to be exactly the same as the previous one. Meaning that we're just going to extract from ender chest and put it inside another ender chest. So yeah, something like this is fine. We're getting the gold opinium core. Anyhow, this is the speed that we're getting gold opinium cores, which is uh, a bit garbage. We are getting these guys much faster. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, you need 4, so 32 to 8. Ah, upgrades. So I'm not saying now it should be super fast, but it should be decently fast, yes. That's more like it. If that is the case, let me also finish the diamond version, and I'll be right back. Well, finally, diamond opinion core, and this is the rate that we're getting it. It's actually not that bad. The problem is that I think my ratios are wrong. Uh, they don't really seem wrong, but we're not using these opinion cores. We're just using these ones. I mean, in any case, this rate is not that bad, so I'm not really going to complain. Anything more than this is going to be horrendously laggy. It's actually incredibly laggy, we're at 50 FPS. We were at 100. Hello! In the comment section of the previous episode, I received two very important comments. Let's address them. One of the most important comments that I got was regarding the molecular assemblers. If you guys remember, I did say that sometimes they stop working. 
And apparently this is the reason. Items get stuck. That is so weird. And it's everywhere. It seems if you have long crafting sessions and then you exit the game, this happens. Which is very new to me. What the hell is this? So I guess from now on, no more long crafting jobs. Because uh, look at the amount of garbage I got from the assemblers. Uh, and that was just one set. Uh, what do we have here? Yep. Oh my goodness. Alright, that was an amazing tip. And well, the base is functioning perfectly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. However, the other tip is from my good friend Thomas. Prince of Valhalla. And it's really something that I didn't want to do, but I guess I have to do it. Basically what he's saying is that, yes, if you want to craft a ton of collectors, you're going to need millions of items, right? And if you want to craft those items using your applied energistic system, it's going to take ages and ages and ages. Therefore, we are going to need independent production lines for different items. Because for example, we're going to need around 4 million ender ingots. And this is the rate that we're making it. It's amazing, but it's never going to reach 4 million. And the reason that I did not want to do that is that we need to make a huge expansion to the base. Uh, we have a hole here. That could be one expansion. We also kind of have a window over here, so that could be a few more machines. Anyways, let us start from the basics. Ender ingot. There are a few ways of making it. One of them is through the induction smelter, and it's incredibly fast. Look. You can't even see it. The other one is through a metallurgic infuser. The question is, why don't you have power? Oh, you do. Is it going to be any faster? No, so we have to go with induction smelter. Dump. The reason that I'm saying this is that, yes, we can speed upgrade this, we can convert it into an ultimate factory, but nothing beats this. It's just broken. <laughs> yeah, that should take care of the ender ingots. We have four induction smelters, fully upgraded. And honestly speaking, I have no idea if the upgrades are affecting anything or not. Because, you know, if you remove it, it's still the same thing. But we do it anyways. And just in case you're curious, uh, this is the speed that we're getting it. It's still going to take a bit of time until we hit 4 million. But one thing that I'm actually doing is that I am ordering the relays and the collectors in increments of 100. I think they are done. This is why you can't see them. Oh yeah, they are done. Okay, we should not waste time, so let's order 100 more. So, ender ingot, gone. Now we need to have a system for making black iron ingots. I have a feeling, yeah, that is also something that we need in the millions. Again, the way that we are making black iron is relatively easy and incredibly fast. This is the speed. You can't see it. It's just that apparently one device is never gonna cut it. And well, this should also take care of the black iron. Uh, we have four fluid transposers. This should be fast enough. I mean, that is the hope. We're getting 100 every two seconds? Maybe one second? But now the issue is that we are going to need millions of blaze powder. So, I don't know, let's order a million. Yeah, that should work. And you should remember, we are crafting it relatively fast. One thing that we need in very large quantities is glass. And some of you guys have been suggesting that I should use the rainbow furnace. I'm not really sure if this is going to be laggy or not, but we are going to give it a try. Uh, you're going to insert everything from the energy condenser, and by everything I just mean sand, and you're going to output to the back, which is an ender chest. Uh, this is probably an overkill, but let's use a fading matter. That's gonna be trillions of sand. Oh, and by the way, while we are at it, uh, let's move this stupid thing. This guy. This has been here for like, I don't know, 15 episodes? Yeah, so if we give you power... Is it one stack every time? Nice. Yeah, it seems to be one stack every time. <laughs> That's stupid. Also, for some reason, it stops. Why do you stop? Oh, I need to empty the ender chest faster. <laughs> How do I do that? Yeah, we should have a few extra channels over here. Let's use it. Yeah, now we seem to be fine. You know, the issue is that keeping this stupid ender chest empty whenever I'm crafting is just impossible. And sadly, I don't have that many alternatives. I can't really use an interface everywhere. But maybe for you, we can make a very small exception. We are going to make an entangled block, like so. Now you should be fine. Yeah, this is the only crazy machine, so <laughs> the rest of them work fine. Obviously, we cannot finish every automation that we need for the Mark III collectors and anti-relays in one day. But uh, let's begin with something else. Eternal Crystal. It is going to require combination crafting, which literally is something that I'm not going to do today. Because, you know, I am really tired of placing blocks, so... That's not gonna happen today. But if we want to make tens of thousands of eternal crystals, we are going to need millions of crystal shards and ender shards. The speed that I'm making them has improved, but it's still not great. So let us try to fix that, I guess. Uh, let's order 1000 of it. 
for the moment. We are using too many assemblers in order to craft a seed, so what we are going to do is that we are going to use crafters. And we just throw them away from the assemblers. Nice. We are going to have three recipes for the ender shard, you know, so that it's faster. And three recipes for the crystal shard. And two recipes for monozyte. I don't know if we really need it that much, but let's have it anyways. So just out of curiosity, now if I want to order ender shard seeds, that should be incredibly fast. Let's order, I don't know, 100,000. Yeah, it's very fast. That's good. And 100,000 of the crystal shards. Yeah, it could have been even faster, but I guess this is fine. Now that we are getting the seeds at a very fast rate, we need to upgrade these guys, the enriching factories. So amber is something that we don't really need anymore. Let's remove this one. And I'll get two more enriching factories. Yeah, this is more like it. We have doubled our production. I also increased monazite, but I'm not sure if we need it that much. So we have 370,000 ender shards. That means we should be able to order 700,000 seeds. Every time that we are making seeds, we are basically doubling the shards. We also have 290,000 crystal shards. So that's 580,000 seeds? Yes. <laughs> we ran out. The thing is, next episode we are going to have a combination crafter for making the eternal crystal and well, since we are going to consume a lot, I thought increasing production is not a very bad idea. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.